Okay, AI agent and web scraping. Um, you've seen O1 preview um, running web scrapers. You've seen like Claw Sonnet 3.5 running it. You've seen um, Claw Computer API running web scrapers. But you, I bet you haven't seen Lang Graph agent trying to web scrape and like reason through different loops. So the, the premise of this, this tutorial is that I want to be able to give this tool a root domain URL. So for example, canadagoose.com and I wanted to find this jacket. Now, if you go to canadagoose.com or any website really, you don't always land on the page that you want. And every root page has like a ton of subdomains and subpages and you know, you know, like if you were a person, how would you find where the the jacket is gonna be right like you're gonna have to go and see oh is it under gifts is it under women is it under men so our agent can do that and it can do that even faster than normal humans can do um so today we're gonna be using um two things so fire crawl um open source uh product to uh do web scraping in 2024 it's like it's a very lm friendly so like it give you like markdown stuff like Stuff like that. It's really nice. And uh, oh, look at these cats. And uh, LangGraph, which is uh, an agent framework from LangChain. So we're gonna be trying to do some like agentic web scraping today in Python. So first thing you gotta do, go to install LangGraph and Firecrawl. Um, they both have Python SDK, so that's great. And then f next thing is we're just gonna set up some um, some logging statements. Uh, just to make it easy for us to understand what's going on at each stage. Um, and then, of course, you got to put in the Firecrawl key. So Firecrawl is the service. you got to sign up for a free account. Um, they give you like 500 credits. Each each scrape is a credit, so you can go like ham and you can still go for like a while. Um, but yeah, it's worth the money. Like I use it for my product and stuff like that. So And... Uh, now we go to the, the land graph part. So this is where the, the agentic part comes in. Um, I have a separate uh, lesson in my course that kind of goes into explaining what, what state means, what note means, and stuff like that. But on a high level, we're going to declare um, a way for our agent to start the workflow and take in just two things. So like one, the root domain URL, which is in our case canadagoose.com um, and then the keyword so in our keyword uh, we're, we're not going to be doing any like sort of interesting LLM extraction here we're just going to be doing some like keyword matching so the way it works is it'll just go through all the websites and then if he sees holy cow this is expensive if, if we see um, if it's the agent sees this phrase right here lodge coach jacket black label yeah if you name stuff like this then you deserve to charge like almost a thousand dollars for a jacket. If it sees this phrase, then it'll say to us like, hey, we have found the URL that has the right product. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So to this is what it'll, uh, it'll do to like, you know, get the input from the user. And then this is the, the state that will get passed between each nodes. So if you don't know land graph, um, each node is almost like a, a tool that the agent can, can use or, or a stage in its workflow that it can go through. So like imagine like Zapier, you have like different stages and stuff like different nodes. One node goes into one node does the thing, pipes the output out to the next node, stuff like that. Imagine going to a grocery store and you're like taking things from the aisles. So you have like a bag that you carry with you all the way to the checkout, and by the end you have all these data that you carry with you. Yeah, so that's that's basically state in land graph. Um, and then um, here's where we define our first node. This is just so that we take the input uh, from our user and then we just, you know, instantiate the first like empty, almost like empty state for like our overall state that we'll carry throughout all the nodes. Um, and then um, this is where it gets interesting. So uh, Firecrawl has this tool called map, which if you send a request to it, it'll give you with the URL, like, like canadagoose.com or any website really. It'll give you all the URLs that are associated with this kind of, with this domain. 
So like, you know, about page, uh, women's section, men's section, Shop Canada, everything you see on here is going to be revealed when you hit that endpoint from Firecrawl. So we need that because we want to be able to get a list of URLs. Um, and then our the, the one that we need is going to be in there. It's going to be like hundreds or maybe thousands of URLs. Yeah. Um, and when I built this, the first version of this, what I did was I basically ran this until it reaches the end and I ran out of credits. But then I talked to the founder of Firecrawl and he was like, yeah, you can just pass in the keyword uh, into the um, the request to, to Firecrawl. So here's how you set up your Firecrawl. You just set up the, uh, the client object here, pass in the API key, and then you just go dot map URL. And then you have a params in here, which you can pass in the uh, the keyword. And that's what I did. So I just say, okay, so from my initial state, I have a keyword. I will say like, you know, Lodge Coach jack, Jacket Black Label. And then it'll just rank the website that has that keyword up top semantically. And I'm like, wow, this just made my life so much easier. So yeah, that's what it's gonna do. Um, this is all it takes for you to like get all the sub URLs from our main URL. And then it's just some like um, error logging stuff, uh, error checking, stuff like that. Because sometimes, um, I guess most of the time, when you scrape the web, uh, timeout happens a lot. And you want to be able to, to catch that and you know, maybe retry or like do something with it. And then we have to the next node. And I'll show you in a quick second how all the nodes look together. Because I'm, I I need to be visual when I when I deal with like node based um, systems. Like this flat code like this is a little hard to understand, but you'll you'll see in, in a quick second. Let me just explain this real quick. So the next note is once it gets the all the other URLs, the sub URLs, it'll update the overall state and it'll pass that state over to the next node. So see, return state, and now here we just pipe that right in here. And um, in here, what's gonna do is it's gonna take all the the sub URLs, it's gonna batch them up. So like every few URLs in the batch, and then it'll just go and s and use Firecrawl to scrape um, each batch one URL at a time, um, which is here. It's gonna use the scraper. So the scraper is gonna be used, um, and then it's just take one URL at a time. It takes obviously this should have been um, overall state. Uh, yeah, so it'll take like the state uh, from the state. It takes the URL and then from the URL, it'll like you know get use Firecrawl to scrape that, get the markdown out, and then once we get the markdown, um, we're gonna eventually pipe that over to the last node, which is evaluate. So again, this is a very land graph thing. You have a state, and then you just pass that over, um, and then. In the evaluate a uh, node, what we what we're gonna do is we want to seek whether or not the information we're looking for is in the website that is currently being scraped, and if it is, this is a very land graph thing. Like this is not I, I didn't make this up. Like we we turn n and it'll just end the entire sequence. Like our our agent will shut down, and if not, it'll go back to the scrape manager and it'll just run the entire thing again. Okay, we haven't found the. <laughs> Lodge coach jacket black label seven hundred ninety five dollars Jesus uh in in this batch so we're just gonna go and go to the next batch we'll do that for like a few URLs until we find it um and here here is where um land graph agent will be uh instantiated and the fun thing about this is <laughs> land graph has a way for you to almost like visualize all the nodes by drawing a mermaid chart. I absolutely love this because then you can see, okay, so we start here, first placeholder note, just, you know, convert in the input, you know, input being the URL and the keyword to like a, an overall state that can get passed around different notes. Um, and then the first note, first real note is to get the sitemap, you know, get the sub URLs. And then we pass all that state to the scrape manager. The manager decides, okay, let's scrape one batch at a time, pass out the scraper note. Scrape all the URLs. Maybe some of them fail, but whatever. Pass the state up to evaluate. Is our information in the in the batch? No. Go back. Do it again for the next batch. And just go. Keep them. Keep going. And the reason why we know it's the next batch is because we have this overall state that we keep passing around 
our our, our notes uh, over and over uh, here. It's in every single one of our notes. That's how the agent knows what's happening at all times, and and, and over time. Yeah. So that's that, and now we're gonna run it. So let's just put this in here. This is our keyword. This is our root URL. Again, we don't know which website this is on, but we just know this is the root domain. Run and burn some credits. All right. Run the first note, run the second note. Usually, um, web scraping takes a while. So, so first, it, it, the second thing is it hit the, the slash map URL uh, endpoint from Firecrawl. It got back all the URLs and it goes on, 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 you know, like, you know. But then we also pass in the keywords, so it was able to like rank the URL that has the most relevant keyword up first. And this is the weird trick that I learned again from the founder. Like I didn't read the documentation properly, so like when he told me this, I'm like, wow. Don't have to like loop through the entire thing. So it found 78 URLs to scrape, and then it oh my god, it went through um, the first batch. First batch, do, 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 do. Actually, this is actually the right URL. And then found another one. And then I found another one. So these are like the same product, but from different regions, I'm assuming. Yeah. So again, going back to like, we found 78 URLs, but we put all the ones that are the most relevant to your keyword up top, semantically. Um, where's BT? Great Britain? No. Where's this? Shop Canada. Yeah, where's BT? Like, which which country is this? Um, PR. Anyways, this is not super relevant at all. I'm just, I'm just curious. Um, yeah, if I don't know what's these things are, let me know in the comments. But it found the your the information here. Obviously, this is the right jacket. And it ended the um, the um, the loop. Okay, let me try something. So, what if we take out the keyword, and we don't um, we don't rank it? If we don't rank it, it's gonna have to run and run and run. Um, let's run uh, a cell below. It's just gonna have to run over and over and over, batch over batch. Okay, now we're running. Okay, now 380 URLs to scrape. So see, now like the first batch has none of the relevant URLs. So we have to work really hard to then, you know, scrape by batch and then see, evaluate, and then, you know, see if the, the keyword is, is included in any of the, so those websites, if not, Gotta go to the next badge. Um, lots of URLs here, and they're all relevant. Irrelevant. This is the domain, by the way. Yeah. So, information not found. Continuing to the next badge. So again, going back to this this image, um, we got 380 sites from this node. Pass that information down here. Go in batches of three at a time. So three URLs get gets passed down to scrapers. Scrapers scrape them, scrapers scrape, and uh, and we evaluate and we see like the keywords in there, any of those websites. Because again, Firecrawl gives you clean, clean markdown, so you can just parse that using a large language model to do uh, entity extraction or not, or just use keyword matching. And then if none of the re information is found, we go back, we go, we pass the state back here, and then we just run the whole thing over again, over again until until well it found it well information found this is new i when i test this i didn't know that it could just find it in the sh slash shop slash men i'm gonna go and see it i guess it can just find it like maybe it's like a highlighted product or something um let me see if i can find that as a human <laughs> yes so it's it pops up here so again it found it this so in your system, you can also like set it so that it doesn't stop when it found it. Maybe you just keep it in the, the, the global state and just be like, hey, these are all the sites that that mention this product. Um, so that's another thing you can do. But yeah, it's like super straightforward. Um, 
this code base is going to be uh, this code laugh. It's going to be uh, available in the description. And uh, I'm launching my course, so um, if you're interested, if you're not, it's fine. Like I totally get it. Uh, but if you want like like a longer video of where I explain every single thing on on this code and like other code in other videos and like more content, it's in the description. Like I don't, I'm not trying to force you to buy anything. It's, it's, I made a course and I'm pretty proud of it. Um, but if, <laughs> it's in the description. I don't know how to sell this, but yeah. Uh, yeah, so this is Frog Crawl and Land Graph. Um, I use this in production, so I, I love these two tools. But yeah, find the code in the, in, in the description. It's it's not, it's not paywall. The, to the code is not paywall. It's the course is different. So that's all I have to say. But yeah, uh, happy Halloween. Peace.